Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll give you a quick introduction to the MVC pattern. We'll look at what MVC is and what are the different components inside the MVC pattern. As we all know, MVC stands for Model, View and Controller. I've even done a video about MVC in the servlet series, but I thought I'd just visit this once more and give you a brief overview of the MVC pattern itself. I'll start this tutorial with a story. This is the same analogy I used in the servlets tutorial and uh, I received a lot of good feedback that uh, that said that this analogy helped them understand the concepts and uh, I hope you agree. So this story is of a guy who wants to own his own restaurant. He realizes one day that his dream is to manage his own restaurant so he builds one and uh, you know he just wants to start small, he does not have any employees so he decides to take all the roles of the restaurant himself. So since he happens to be a good cook, it's not a problem. So he has uh, a kitchen built in and he has some tables for uh, the customers to be seated in and uh, he's open and ready for business. Now we have a customer who comes in and um, they want to try out this new restaurant. So what are the steps that this guy has to do in order to serve the customer? Step one would be to first get to know what the customer wants, get the customer's order. Now he has to get the menu and hand it over to the customer. The customer chooses from one of the items available in the menu and then uh, our stick man over here gets the order. Step two, he has to take uh, the order to the kitchen and prepare the food. Note that this is just a one man uh, restaurant. There are no other employees, so he has to do all the roles himself. So he cooks the food. And then when the food is completely cooked, he places and consolidates the food on the on the tray as per the order. So there could be different elements of food that an order comprises of. So there is a step involved in placing the food in the right manner. So that's that would be the third step. And then finally, the fourth step is to get the tray to the customer and serve the food. So this these are the four basic steps that our stickman has to do to serve any customer to the restaurant. Now, this could get a bit tricky if there are multiple customers uh, once the restaurant starts becoming uh, a hit and there are a lot of customers coming in, then it would not be possible for one person to manage all these steps on his own. So this is a problem that our stickman anticipates and he's really worried about how he can solve this problem. Now he happens to have a friend who is a programmer, a Java programmer, so he gives him a call and tells him about his problem. He says, okay, this is what I need to do for every customer and I need to do all these four steps for each customer over and over again. And uh, his programmer friend tells him, hey, this is actually like coding everything in a single servlet when you're writing a web application. Now, what does he mean by that? Let's take a simple web application example where everything is happening inside a single servlet. If the user makes a request to a URL in a web application, then what would the servlet have to do? Now, this is a single servlet web application. It has to do everything on its own. Now, the first thing it would do is to get the request parameters. Now, it's a HTTP request. It needs to get the request parameters and act on it accordingly. So it would get the URL, it would get the post or the get parameters and all those things. So it gets the information about the request itself. The second step would be to do the processing. Uh, let's say it involves getting some data out of the database. Now it would have to connect to the database using JDBC. It would have to run the query and retrieve the results that are required. The third step would be to take that result and format them into HTML, which would mean it results in a whole lot of uh, out statements. It, had, it has to print different HTML tags, and it also has to embed the live data that it gets out of the database. And once the HTML is formatted, it has to return the HTML back to the user who has sent the request. Now, this is the analogy that you see here with uh, what our stick man has to do in a restaurant. He has to do everything by himself. Now, this gives the stick man an idea. And he says, instead of me doing all the work by myself, let me hire somebody who is an expert cook who specializes in cooking. Not that our stickman doesn't know how to cook, 
but he wants somebody else to manage that part of the responsibility so that a stickman is free to do a whole lot of other stuff. So he happens to find a good cook and he hires the cook for his restaurant. Now the cook works in the kitchen and the cook is not responsible for anything else apart from preparing the food. Now with the cook in place, let's see how this flow changes. Now when a customer comes in, our stick man again goes and gets the customer's orders. Step one, nothing has changed. Now the step two, instead of the stick man actually preparing the food himself, he hands it over to the cook. So he passes on the required information for the cook to actually cook the food. Now the cook actually prepares the food and then hands it over back to our stick man. Step three is the same, consolidate and decorate the food. And then step four, hand it back to the customer. Now this is a slight improvement from the previous situation that our stick man was in. He had to do everything himself, but this time he has a cook to prepare the food and then the rest of the stuff is managed by the stick man. Well, this is slightly better, but then our stick man still anticipates problems when there are a lot more people who are gonna come in. Now, again, he has a call with his programmer friend and the programmer friend says, hey, this is like using beans, which take care of the business service. Now, what does he mean by that? Let's take an example of a web application that uses a servlet, but it also uses business service Java beans. Now, the servlet, the first step of the servlet is to get the request parameters when the user makes a request. And then instead of connecting to the database to do the processing itself, it calls a method of a bean. There is another bean which takes care of, you know, connecting to the database, retrieving the results and all that stuff. So it publishes some methods. Now the servlet does not uh, prepare the food itself. It does not connect to the database itself. It calls a method of the bean. And now the bean connects to the database and returns the response data. It is raw data. Now the, the raw data is a response, the return of the business service method that's called by the servlet. Now the servlet takes that data, formats the results to HTML and sends it back. Now this is an improvement from the previous situation where the servlet did all the processing itself. Okay, so now our stickman gets another idea. Uh, he wants to improve the process yet again and he brings in another recruit into the restaurant this is a person who specializes in decorating the food. Now what happens is, when a customer comes in, this is the flow. Step one, our stickman gets the customer's orders. Step two, passes on the order to the cook. The cook prepares the food. And then step three, instead of decorating the food himself, the stickman passes the cooked food to the food decorator. He's a new employee who specializes in decorating the food. so. The stick man passes the food to that person. The decorator decorates the food and then that stick man gets the tray and hands it back to the customer. Now this is a drastic improvement from our first situation where our stick man did all the work himself. Now there are two new recruits. There's one person who prepares the food and there's one person who's in charge of presenting the food. And then our stick man still is the main guy who orchestrates all this. The stick man goes to the customer, gets the order, passes it on to the cook, and then gets the, the cooked food, passes it on to the presenter, and then gets the food back to the customer. So these are the three roles that uh, actually the stick man ends up with. And then this you know, provides a very good efficiency and then our restaurant becomes a huge hit. And then now our stick man gives a call to his programming friend. And then our programming friend says, that sounds like MVC. Now, this is what MVC conceptually is. Now, what does an MVC do? Now, the MVC consists of a servlet with a business service bean as well as a JSP. Now, what are the steps? The servlet gets the request parameters, passes the request parameters to a business service method. The business service method works with the database, does the processing, and then the results are passed to a JSP. A JSP takes care of handling the HTML formatting and all that stuff. And then the results are passed back to the user. 
Note one difference here. The JSP is directly passed to the user. Now the servlet takes the data and passes it to the JSP. The JSP does not return the HTML back to the servlet. It doesn't really need to because this already has the formatted HTML. This directly goes to the user. So it's almost as if the presenter is taking the data and I mean, I'm sorry, the presenter is taking the food and passing it on to the customer. So this is a slight deviation from the analogy, but apart from that, the main rules are the same. You have the servlet, which is the controller, which is the, you know, our stick man who acts as a waiter. And then you have the business service bean, which is the cook. And then you have the JSP, which is the presenter. Now, normally what would happen in this kind of a flow is something like this. Now, having understood this, uh, we are in a good position to define what MVC is, what model view and controllers are. So C stands for the controller, the person who controls everything, the person who orchestrates everything. That happens to be the servlet here, the waiter or the stickman in a restaurant analogy. Now, the servlet is controlling how the flow of uh, execution should happen. Now, there could be multiple beans over here. There could be multiple JSPs over here. And the servlet orchestrates how the flow of control should happen. It can, you know, it looks at the input parameters, the request parameters, and it decides which methods of which beans need to be called. And then it also decides which JSP needs to be referred to in order to present the data. Now, you might wonder what happens if there are multiple servlets. We're talking about just one servlet here. Now, what if there are multiple servlets? There could be. But in that case, there has to be some kind of a front controller. There has to be one particular entry point which decides which servlet has to, you know, take up the execution. It could be a filter over here, which, you know, make sure that that gets triggered before the servlets uh, pick up the execution. But then the point here is that there has to be only one controller. The controller looks at the request parameters and then decides how the flow of execution needs to take place. Now this leads us to model view and controllers. So model happens to be the business service. It could also be a class calling a business service. You know, it could there could be multiple elements there, but you need to think about the concepts here to understand what this pattern actually advises. The, the pattern advises that there is one particular entity that is solely concerned with getting the data, providing the data, and being the data itself. Different definitions of uh, model in different documents. Uh, some people call the, the role of getting the data from the database, doing the processing, you know, the, the role of the cook as the model, the role of the business service bean as the model. And uh, some other definitions say that the data that's actually getting uh, retrieved is the model. And I think it's safe to think of them both as model. You need to think of both the data of the application as well as the behavior that, you know, that pulls up the data, both of them together form what we call as the model. Now the view is what actually uh, renders the model into a form that's actually displayable, that's presentable to the user. This is the, this is the UI part of it. So the business and the data part of it is the model and the UI part of it is the view. And then the controller is the one who orchestrates them both. It pass, passes the necessary data to the model, lets it do its work, and then it calls the right view in order to do the presentation, lets the view do its work, and it orchestrates the entire flow. Now, why do we need MVC? Why do we need this distinction between three different roles? Uh, well, some of the concepts are obvious uh, if you look at the restaurant analogy. Now, why did our stickman hire a cook? First of all, the stickman did not want to do all the roles by himself because there, was, there were quite a lot of roles that needed to be done. But some of the other advantages are, uh, now let's say, uh, you know, the stickman wants to try out new cuisines uh, to be made available in the restaurant. Now, instead of learning the cuisines himself, what the stickman can do is hire a new cook who is a specialist in those cuisines. And uh, then when the order comes for those cuisines, all that the stickman has to do is to pass the order to the right cook. So there could be multiple cooks and the stickman does not have to worry about learning new things to cook. So that would be the first advantage. The controller is separated from the model. 
the controller does not really have to know what the model does. The controller does not have to know what the database is, where to pull in the data, all that stuff. The controller just worries about taking the user input and then passing it to the right model. The second advantage is the view is separated from the model. The cook does not have to worry about how to you know, make the food presentable to the user. The cook just worries about how to make it taste good. And then the presenter is the person who is actually arranging the food and making it presentable. So that's the second advantage. Uh, some of the side benefits are that the view can change without the model having to change. Now the processing could be the same, but the UI could be different depending on the type of application, say. Now you can have a business service bean that is used in a web application as well as in a desktop application. Now the, the business service bean does not have to change. Only the view has to change. If it's a web application, it has to display HTML. And if it's a desktop application, it has to display, uh, you know, controls in the, you know, in the UI of the application itself. So this distinction is handy if you want to change the UI part of it without having to change the the core business service part of it. And then the third distinction is, of course, the third advantage is that the view is separated from the controller. Again, the controller does not have to worry about how the presentation happens. There could be multiple views catering to different, uh, different types of application, and then the controller just calls upon the right view depending on the user input. So these are some of the reasons why MVC is a popular pattern. There is separation of concerns and there is minimal change uh, to the other roles if any one of the roles happens to change. Now there are multiple MVC frameworks that address this concept. Now what we've seen as MVC is actually a pattern. It's a, it's an architecture pattern as some people would say. It's the way you would architect the application. MVC frameworks are actually classes and libraries that help you if you architect your application in the MVC pattern. So if you choose the MVC pattern, then there are a few things that you will have to do in your application and uh, MVC frameworks uh, provide you the foundation on which you can build your own application. And uh, there are a lot of different MVC frameworks. You know, if you just look at the web application uh, frameworks alone, there are lots of them. And then there are other web, you know, MVC frameworks that are not particular to a web application. You could have an MVC framework for desktop applications. You could have MVC framework for uh, mobile applications and so on. So different MVC frameworks have different implementations of uh, these concepts, but then the core concepts of model view and controller that we've just discussed are the same. So they provide some pre-built classes for these core concepts, and then we can extend them and build our application using those frameworks. So some of the popular Java web MVC frameworks I've listed over here, and of course this is not a complete list, there are plenty more. And, uh, you know, some of them have really gained traction off late. And uh, you, you, most of the web applications that you would write, uh, you would be using some MVC framework or some MVC uh, library or the other. And it's very likely that uh, the MVC framework that you use is one of them in this list.